This week in the field, I trade the ocean to go inland and am way out of my element. Hey everybody, I'm Scott Davenport. Welcome to In the Field. This week, uh, doing something different, something I would probably not normally have done, went out to take photos of flowers. Um, I'm certainly not a, a flower person, a flower guy. It's uh, just not something I would normally go and do. As much as there is the nice bloom every year, like in the desert areas, like Anza Borrego, which is you know close to San Diego, uh, and also inundated with people. I'm not a crowd person either, but uh, I got uh, got invited to join a few other photographers uh, for uh, a morning to go out and shoot the wildflowers and poppy blooms that were happening. And uh, it was it was fun. It was certainly great. It's always nice to get together with uh, with other people to go and shoot. But I was certainly not in my element. And uh, well, let me show you a little bit of footage that I took from the outing and then talk a little more about uh, what I learned on the shoot. Shooting wild poppies this morning. It's a nice bloom this time of year. Sun's about to come over the hills there and light up this field. I'm uh, getting set up, playing around in manual mode F8 and um, dialing back and forth because I need to get both the sky and the foreground in shape. Right now, it's so uh, contrasty that the sky gets blown yeah, out. Going back and it. forth between <laughs> shutter speeds in manual mode so I make sure I get something good for the foreground and then something uh, you know quicker to take care of the, the background. Otherwise uh, everything gets blown out. Once the sun comes over the hill, I should light this up nicely and uh, we'll I'll probably have something pretty nice to show for it. One more stop on a morning of wildflowers. Uh, this hillside is filled with purple and yellow and a few white wildflowers. Certainly very different than the type of photography I'm used to. I've really been sticking with just a 50 millimeter lens on a crop sensor. So that's kind of like my 75-ish focal length and that's letting me get up and close. It's also an f1.8 lens so I can blur out a whole ton of what is a flower covered mountain. So uh, I think the main thing that I learned is it's really difficult to take a good photo of a flower. Uh, we see lots and lots of those types of photos, as, especially for you know Southern California. If you're uh, anywhere in that region, you know now's the time. Everyone's taking pictures of the desert blooms, and so at least my Instagram feed is just inundated with you know desert photos. And you know they're all nice, but there's only a few that really grab my attention and pull me in. Uh, so uh, I certainly learned that. And anybody who's able to take a photo of a of a flower and and really you know create something unique about it, uh, that's 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 a gift. That's a special skill that uh, not everybody has. So um so that was uh, certainly the the big takeaway for me. And uh, as far as you know, photos that I came away with that I'm I'm pleased with, I got a couple. Uh, I was certainly more comfortable with the beginning of the day with you know um, it being sunrise. You know, kind of a, a, a traditional here's a, a landscape view. It just so happens that the foreground is filled with you know some desert blooms and some flowers. Uh, you know, there's only so many of those photos I need. I'm, I'm not particularly a flower guy, but that type of landscape, you know, very pretty. After that, you know, switching over to uh, just a 50 millimeter lens, and I chose that really just because it's the widest, most open lens I have. It's a, a wide, I'm sorry, in terms of aperture, not in terms of millimeter. Uh, it's an f1.8, and so let me throw out uh, the you know, throw the background out of focus completely. And so I spent most of the time just handheld, walking around with that and trying to find you know a couple of interesting flowers, and um, you know, getting down low and trying to have a different angle and perspective. All those things that I'm sure if you've ever tried to take a photo of a flower, you read about. And uh, I had people there, thankfully, that I could ask questions to. So all in all, you know, it was it was a fun outing. As um, I don't know, uncomfortable as it was, not uncomfortable. It's just um, I don't know, new. And so the tip of the week is to try something different. And uh, I think for me, it's going to help me be less formulaic in my other photography. So uh, you know, the next time that I'm out at the ocean where I've got an interesting foreground subject, I might reach for that f1.8 lens or maybe just shoot at f4 or something like that to, to change the depth and change the perspective and something that I might not normally do because I 
develop habits like every other photographer. And it's good to be reminded that those habits, when they work for a particular genre of photography, they don't work for another one. And then you start to cross over and start to mix things together. And I'm hoping that will yield some interesting results. And that's going to wrap it up for this week in the field. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, let me know somehow. Social shares of this are always appreciated. Comments, likes, all that stuff. It's nice to know that people are out there and getting some value out of these and maybe learning something along the way. Well, until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Happy shooting. Northern Southern California, if you want to call it that. That's bad. Northern Southern. So the, the first thing I really learned is, first thing I learned is to scratch your nose before recording. Oh my gosh, I feel like I'm going to sneeze. I felt a little more comfortable with the, let's do that one more time. What am I talking about here? This type of photography that you may not be you know, new with, uh, may not be new with, doesn't make any sense at all.